Welcome to our short tutorial on using the video annotation tool developed by the Australian National University's Computer Vision and Machine Learning Group. The tool allows for labeling of bounding boxes, polygon regions, and skeletons in videos. It is simple and efficient for anyone to use and runs completely within the browser with no client-side installation necessary. The tool is open source. You can find links to the code and tool itself in the description below. The first thing you'll notice when you load a video is that you can view two different frames at the same time. This is a unique feature of our video annotation tool. It allows you to use one frame as a reference while labeling another, which makes it easy to track multiple object instances across different frames. If you prefer to view just one frame or zoom in to get better resolution, simply click the magnifying glass icon. Clicking it again will restore the two views. There are a few other features I want to point out before we begin annotating the video. First is the navigation bar, which allows you to scrub through the video. You can advance both frames at the same time by dragging on the center bar, or frame separately by dragging on the ends. Arrow keys as well as page up and page down give you shortcuts for finer control. The second feature is the play button, which lets you watch the video in real time so that you can get familiar with its contents. Pressing stop will return to the beginning of the video. The navigation bar also stores keyframes. These represent specific locations in the video that you might want to keep track of. For example, if you want to label a video at one second resolution, then you can set every tenth frame as a keyframe, assuming that the video was loaded at 10 FPS. Click the pencil button next to the navigation bar, then click Generate, enter 10, and click OK when you're done. You can now navigate through the keyframes by pressing the previous or next buttons. Notice that both the left and right panels change a feature that we will find useful when we get to labeling. The target button will take you to the nearest pair of adjacent keyframes. Between the left and right panels are various controls used for annotation. For now, I just want to point out the grayscale switch, which allows you to choose between rendering frames in color or grayscale. Since annotations are overlaid in color, I personally prefer the grayscale option. Below the two video panels is where you get to see various annotations. Now, let's start labeling. The first thing to do is configure the tool for the object categories that we care about. The tool will remember the configuration between annotation sessions. We can also load and save these to and from file. In this video, we are going to label three objects, humans, robots, and books. We'll only label the persons and robots heads. You can have more labels configured that will be used in any one video. A default category will always be available. Here we're adding the three labels and setting their colors to blue for human, red for robot, and brown for book. Okay, I'm now ready to label, so I'll go back to the annotation page. The first thing I will label is the person's head. I do this by clicking on the frame and dragging the bounding box over the head. I then choose the label human. I repeat the same thing for the robot's head and for the book. Notice that as I select the label for the bounding box, its color changes from the default green to the color corresponding to the object label. Now I can do the same thing for the second frame by drawing a bounding box around the person's head. However, it's sometimes easier to copy annotations from the previously labeled frame across and then simply adjust them for the new frame. Let's do that instead. Once copied, I now adjust the bounding boxes to be tight around the objects in the second frame. Now, moving on to the next keyframe, we can proceed with the annotations. Notice how I get to keep track of the last annotated frame in the left panel as I annotate the new frame in the right panel. Here I could copy the annotations as I did before, but since the shot has changed, it's easier to start from scratch. I label both the book and the robot. I can now proceed in this manner to label all the other keyframes in the video. Here I'm speeding up the tutorial by 5x so we can complete the annotation and talk about some other features of the tool.
Once I've finished labeling, I can go back to the start and play through the video. Notice that the annotations show whenever the video plays through an annotated frame. Now let me quickly demonstrate to you a slightly advanced feature. Here I have the first two keyframes selected, but the frames between them have not been annotated. I can get the tool to automatically interpolate annotations between keyframes by labeling instances in each of the frames. I now have annotations between the two keyframes and I can adjust them as required. I could continue through the entire video in this manner if I so wished. However, this is rarely necessary for labeling training data. In addition to bounding box annotations, the tool supports labeling polygon regions and skeletons on a per frame basis. For example, to label a polygon region, we select region mode and then click on the vertices of the polygon. Double clicking to complete the shape. The tool can also be used to label video segments. Here I navigate to the start and end frame of the segment that I want to annotate. I then click the plus button and type in a description for this video segment. After navigating away from the segment, I can always return to it by clicking on the target button. In other videos, we'll explore these labeling types, show some more advanced features of the tool, and provide tips and tricks for generating high quality labels in an efficient way. Don't forget to save your annotations regularly and practice with the tool, getting to know its features before embarking on a large data labeling task. Thank you for watching.